Hi guys. So this one, it's really bad. I mean like really bad. Okay. So this is the one that I looked up the ingredients on. This is McCormick's lemon pepper. I love lemon pepper. Lo love it on fish specifically, like when I'm cooking fish. That's what I like to do. So here's the ingredients. Salt, black pepper, citric acid, onion, sugar, garlic, calcium, stearate, silicon dioxide, calcium silicate, celery seed, lemon oil, FDNC yellow number five. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> now, um, calcium stearate is generally recognized as safe. Uh, but it causes gastrointestinal symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting in large doses. What exactly is a large dose? Um, systemic effects such as ringing in the ears, dizziness, high blood pressure, blurred vision, um, redness and itching, of the skin. Silicon dioxide. This one, they've done no research on people, but in animals, they found uh, no link to the food additive silicon dioxide with increased risk of cancer, organ damage, or death. In addition, studies trusted source have found no evidence that silicon dioxide is an, in, as an additive in food can affect reproductive health, body weight, or body birth weight, birth weight or body weight. Um, so supposedly it's safe, but I don't know. There's a whole lot of stuff out there. Uh, the European Union, which seems to have more strict regulations about um, food than we do, urged European Union to impose stricter guidelines on silicon dioxide until further research could be done. Their concerns focused on the nano-sized particles, some of which were smaller than 100 nanometers, I believe. NM, whatever NM is. Okay, did you guys know that there are over 2,000 products that have nanotechnology in them? Nanotechnology. And that nanotechnology is capable of breaking the blood brain barrier. How about calcium silicate. This is to make it free flowing. You know, you got to have free flowing lemon pepper, don't you? Yeah. Aluminum. Chock full of aluminum. Uh, it's used as an anti-caking agent. Uh, however, in healthy individuals, at 0.3% of orally ingested aluminum as absorbed into the GI tract. It should be noted that in individuals with impaired renal function, ingested aluminum is cause for concern. Improper excretion of aluminum can lead to deposits in the brain, bone, liver, heart, spleen, and muscles. Additionally, aluminum absorbed intravenously has the potential to remain in the body 
Excess aluminum has been linked to neurological conditions, certain types of anemia, kidney failure, and a softening of the bones. So, let's get to the real meat of it. Really good stuff. Okay, FDNC yellow number five. In the 1920s, there was some controversy about whether or not tartrazine, tartrazine had negative effects on the health of children. Some people claim it caused hyperactivity. How many people have taken their kids to, to the doctor saying, I have this hyperactive kid, and they put them on some kind of medication for hyperactivity? Do they ever ask, are, are you feeding your child FDNC yellow number five regularly? <laughs> uh, anyway, but it wasn't until 1973 when these concerns started gaining attention in the scientific field. Research suggested that certain food additives, including salicylates, Salicylates caused learning problems in children. Further studies or further, further research failed to prove these claims. But in 2004, an attempt to demonstrate the correlation between tartrazine exposure and hyperactivity failed to provide conclusive results once again. Love to see how that study went and you know, like all the details and the particulars. Yeah. Uh, the Food Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization conducted safety studies to test tartrazine in 2017. They concluded that occasional exposure to this food dye doesn't represent a significant health concern in children or adults. Of course, they think that any kind of poison is generally recognized as safe, too, right? <sighs> All right. In the U.S., Canada, and many countries in the European Union, products that contain yellow dye number five are legal. They must be sold with a warning label. Why? Why warn anybody if... There is no problem. The label should read that the product might cause allergic reactions like bronchial asthma. Tartrazine sensitivity is often present in people with a sensitivity to aspirin. Um, many of the items in your pantry might have this food coloring in their ingredients. It probably poses no harm to you or your family in moderation. But if you want to stay away from tartrazine, take a closer look at the labels of your food, medicines, and cosmetic products. How about you just don't put it in the food? Then we don't have to look, we don't have to guess, and we don't have to wonder why you are putting it in the food. Okay, so, I just wanted to point out, this is lemon pepper, McCormick. McCormick has been sued multiple times. And I gotta find my little sheet, two seconds here. Cause I have a sheet. Oh, here it is. Okay. So. In 2016, a class action lawsuit, plaintiffs argued that McCormick mislabeled the products as natural in order to boost prices as demand for natural products increased, thus exploiting customers. Um, the settlement was for $3 million. The case was um, Megan Hove versus McCormick. It was Western District of New York, uh, they alleged that McCormick mislabeled. Um, there was another one. 
let's see, McCormick herbs and spices, including McCormick's culinary ground basil. Oh, that was the whole thing. Uh, this was another one. This was Ballis, Ballis Dury. Oh, I have no idea. B A L I S T R E R I. Uh, versus McCormick. This was in January of 2022, and they were sued. Does not say what the status was, but they have failed to disclose herbs and spices that contain high levels of toxic heavy metals. Toxic heavy metals. So, if you research McCormick, you'll see that they're not exactly a com company that. Uh, discloses things real well. I normally would tell you all of this and then I would send you to another video, but because it's a fairly short video, I just wanted to show you. So, you buy organic lemons, okay? You dehydrate them. No, they're not pretty, bright, yellow anymore because they're dehydrated. They're kind of cool looking actually. Anyway, you get organics, uh, hopefully from the health food store or where we can. Not guaranteed they're organic, but hell of a lot better than they're just buying the regular ones. You put them in a dehydrator and you dehydrate them. About 130 for, I don't know, 10 hours maybe. Uh, just watch them and see when they're crisp and ready to go. You can also do it in the sun. So if you live in a sunny place, you can get a screen, make a frame out of wood, put your, your items on there and dehydrate it in the, in the sun. Uh, might take a couple days to do that. And of course, you're gonna wanna cover it and make sure the birds don't get to it. Um, anyway, the other thing you can do is you can put your stove on the lowest setting, put a piece of parchment paper down, put your lemon slices on that, and dehydrate it in the stove or in the oven. Then you get your little coffee grinder, okay? Just regular old coffee grinder. I don't know what this crups. I use this for everything. And you grind it down. That's what it looks like when it's ground, okay? You just take the whole thing, rind and pulp, dehydrated, grind it up. Then you take some pepper, just regular old pepper. You can take peppercorns and you can grind those up too. And you add it. Just like so. I would say about a two to one ratio. But here's the cool thing about it. It didn't cost you $5 a bottle. You don't have to worry about all the toxic stuff that's in it. You don't have to worry about having anaphylaxis or gastrointestinal upset or heavy metal poisoning or your kids becoming hyperactive, right? And the best part is, what does the lemon cost? About 25, 30 cents maybe? Okay, I could be wrong. Uh, I, let's see, I got my lemons from the farmer's market and I bought them by the pound, so I'm really not sure what a lemon costs. But a lemon and a little bit of uh, pepper, that's all you need. Then you put it in your lemon pepper bottle. If you have a lemon pepper bottle, Oh yeah, and you dump out the stuff that's in there because <laughs> you don't want to eat that stuff. And you put this in there and you have lemon pepper. If you want to, like I saw one thing on there that was celery salt or celery. Uh, I do do celery like I dehydrate my celery and I grind it up 
and I have celery powder that I use in dishes, or I add salt to it and I have celery salt. So I make all my own spices. And I mean, literally, if you go to the grocery store and you buy spices, you're gonna pay anywhere from three, well, this is March, 2023. So you're probably paying five uh, on an average, $5 per bottle, little tiny bottles of spices, mixed spices. And you can make all of those spices yourself for pennies, literally pennies. You guys, <sighs> you're getting ripped off and you're being poisoned all at the same time. So don't do that anymore. You need lemon pepper? Go buy a lemon, dehydrate it, grind it up, and make your own lemon pepper. Then you only have lemon and pepper in it. And you can experiment if you want to put celery in it, do that too. If you want to add salt to it, okay, fine, add salt to it. But the point is no heavy metals, no F, B, and C, yellow number five. Seems like, hmm, I was looking at something. I don't know, I researched so many things that I don't even remember, but anyway, I won't say it just because I don't, it's not on my papers. So it must have been something else. Um, citric acid, you don't really need for lemon pepper. The only thing that citric acid is used for is to keep the lemons from turning brown. Do you care about brown lemons in your lemon pepper? I don't. I can <laughs> care less. I don't need pristine looking lemons. I This looks perfectly good and I'm going to use it tonight on my salmon. I hope you found this really useful. I hope you liked it. And I hope you stop buying these spices. Oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you too, in case I don't get around to doing it, if whatever spices you have, you know, like if you have mixed spices, like I've got like Jack Daniels something or other bottle over there that at one time I obviously purchased it or I kept the bottle because I thought it was a good bottle. You can take and look at the ingredients on that bottle and take all the good ingredients and remix your stuff and throw out the stuff that's in there. So don't throw it away. I mean, throw the product away, but keep the jar and just go and look at the ingredients and make the stuff yourself. You know, start out with like a one-to-one -one ratio, like. You know, one of this, one of this, one of this. If you think a one-to-one -one ratio is a little bit too much, that's fine. Just make it something else. Or start out with like a half a teaspoon of everything and see how you like it and adjust from there. But my chickens are being dorks. Chickens are so funny. Anyway gotta go. Love and hugs. Click like, subscribe, share, um, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified. And I will probably put a couple videos up at the end of this video for you to watch if you want to. Thanks for watching. And let me know down below if you start making your own stuff.